Hello everyone, welcome back to My Hero Academia Podfix. Today will be the continuation of UA Survival Guide. This will be Part 7, Chapter 7. Rizuko hadn't seen Oboro since he'd sent him away with Aizawa Sensei after All Might had arrived in. The ghost had been hesitant, looking between Izuku and Sensei, who was draped over Shoji's back. Izuku had blatantly told the ghost to go with Sensei, even if Oboro had put up a half-hearted fight that he should stay. The fight wasn't over just because All Might had arrived in. There were still villains milling about and students scattered across the USJ arena. Izuku knew that Oboro wanted to be with him, that he wanted to help out, but he also knew that he desperately wanted to be with Aizawa Sensei, too. So, Izuku had made the decision for his friend, head lolling in Oboro's general direction, taking effort not to focus his gaze on the ghost directly as he forces out a stern, Go. That Oberl would be stupid to refute, and he follows that up with a half-smile shot in the ghost's direction. Sensei needs someone with him. For my sake, stay with him, and and come find me if anything changes for the worst, okay? And just like that, Oberl had a mission, hitting two birds with one stone, tagging along with Aizawa Sensei while also being Izuku's personal message boy, should it come down to that. The green-haired boy prays it doesn't, but he's glad to know that he'll know directly if something does happen, instead of how teachers tend to skirt around the truth to spare their feelings. So the ghost had left, following behind Shoji and Aizawa Sensei, almost afraid to get too close. He hovers, but from a distance, shooting uncertain looks back at Izuku while they're on their way out of sight. It's not too long after they're gone that the rest of the pro teachers arrive. He hears present Mike before he sees him the echoing effect of his quirk making Izuku's ears ring the faintest bit. He almost feels sorry for the villains in close range, because present Mike was actually aiming his voice at them. Izuku was just getting second-hand waves. Still, Izuku stays by All Might's side, because he knows something the others don't. All Might isn't doing so well. He knows that All Might's power usage quota was getting smaller and smaller the more he exerted himself, and he's almost sure that's why he hasn't been with Sensei and Thirteen that morning. Not even to mention the fact that this creature, the Nomu, can withstand the power of Izuku's one-for-all punch, so in turn it gives All Might a run for his money, too. The boy is exhaustingly glad when Kirishima, Kachan, and Todoroki join them in battle. He's not sure how much longer that he and All Might could have lasted alone. Kachan just barely manages to save Izuku's face from crumbling apart, like Aizawa Sensei's elbow had, when the decaying, quirked villain's arm shoots out through the warping portal, heading straight for his face. Everything comes to an abrupt end when the decayed, quirked villain gets shot, once and then a couple more times for good measure. He doesn't need to look to see Pro Hero Snipe at the entrance of the USJ, the last place that he'd seen the rest of his classmates. The villain and his sidekick, the warping villain, are gone before Izuku can so much as glance in their direction. They've warped away in the confusion of the pros arriving in with their quirks, All Might launching their attack Nomu out of the building, and Thirteen, who Izuku peers at in genuine surprise because holy heck she's injured, who's trying to capture them in her black hole quirk. As upsetting as that is, it, the two most dangerous villains of all who'd arrived in for the ambush had gotten away. He was also incredibly relieved, though. Everyone was safe now. The biggest threats were gone, and the pros were quickly rounding up those remaining villains for the police, who were no doubt on their way. His classmates were all being found and brought back, and as far as he could see, no one was injured too badly. Izuku can see the steam coming off of All Might, and he knows that he wouldn't have been able to handle staying in his form for much longer. Even now he's struggling. They're saved just in the nick of time as Cementos erects a cement wall between Izuku and All Might, and Kachan, Kirishima, and Todoroki. It's just as his friends leave his view that All Might's bulky hero form collapses into the weak state that Izuku had seen for the first time on top of that building, his first day meeting his hero. It's a blur after that. The two of them are whisked away by pros, hidden away from students by being escorted out to safety and the police flooding in to contain and arrest the rest of the villains. All Might promises that Izuku is fine to be with him, despite his state, and then promptly uses Izuku's injuries to grant him a ticket to Recovery Girl with him. It's surprising, in a way it shouldn't be, that most of the pro hero teachers know of All Might's weakened state. Izuku wonders briefly how many actually know of One for All, but determines that very few must because All Might is so hesitant about it. He'd been upset 
when Izuku had told Kachan, and he still needed to break the news that he's maybe kind of mentioned it to Sensei, even if he hadn't given out any vital details. Still, they know enough to be worried about Izuku seeing his weak form. Cementos actually apologizes for not being able to wall Izuku off like he had the others. But All Might just laughs at it, as he awkwardly rubs the back of his neck, promising that it's fine and he doesn't mind a student seeing as opposed to four students seeing. Izuku doesn't remember a lot of his time with Recovery Girl. He remembers her pressing a kiss to his forehead, and he remembers the pain of his shattered fingers easing as they are healed. He thinks he remembers Recovery Girl hitting All Might. A growl of words shot at him, but he doesn't remember what she'd said. And then she'd stepped out, possibly to check on the other students outside the USJ now that Izuku and All Might were taken care of, maybe even to go to Aizawa Sensei and Thirteen, who were in serious need of a good healer like her. For a moment, Izuku thinks the worse. What is Sensei? What if he wasn't okay? He'd be okay, right? He'd be... He'd look bad, slumped over Shoji's shoulders. He was severely injured. But he'd be okay, right? Izuku puts an abrupt stop to his worrying thoughts when he remembers that Obero was with him, and he's sure that he'd have a side of sobbing ghost had anything happened to his Sensei. Obero had promised to report back, and he trusted the ghost to keep him in the loop. All Might had been silent at Izuku's side. The teen was drowsily settled on the bed, staring down at his bandaged fingers. The bones were mending, and he could see the edges of the dark bruise not covered by bandages lightening. It still hurt, but nowhere near what it had been. Are your injuries still sore, young Minoria? Izuku snaps his attention to his mentor, shaking his head. No, not... Not really. A bit sore, I guess, but I can handle it. I was... I was thinking. What about? Sensei. Izuku almost winces as he says the name. Izuku's brain stalls on the fact that All Might is technically also his sensei. He's sure All Might got the gist of it. Aizawa was their main sensei. Still, he feels the need to correct himself, so he slowly repeats himself to clear up any confusion. I mean, Aizawa sensei, he... Well, you saw him. I did. The man winces a nod, leaning back in his chair beside Izuku's bed. I'm sure he'll be all right, my boy. Aizawa's a strong, persistent man. It'll take more than that to get rid of him. Yeah, Izuku mutters absently. He can't think, but the worst. He'd seen Sensei have his face pressed into the concrete. He'd seen how Obero, who'd had a front-seat view, had wailed in frustration, and then had bad Sensei, how bad he had looked, and he was carried out. Izuku was sure he'd have nightmares. I hope so. There's a lingering of silence. Izuku stares blankly at the wall, but he can feel All Might's eyes on him. He's studying him, watching him carefully. But Izuku trusts All Might. They've gotten closer since that first encounter. Is there something else on your mind, my boy? Izuku lets his attention drift back to his mentor, chewing on his lip thoughtfully. He knows he's got to tell All Might. The hero deserves to know that someone else knows about the quirk. Well, kind of. He hadn't spilled the beans about one for all, thankfully, but he had mentioned his new quirk, and to someone as observant as Aizawa, he's not sure how long it'll be before his sensei starts noticing things and piecing it all together. He doesn't want to keep secrets from All Might, and he knows that the number one hero might start getting suspicious of the extra training sessions he has with sensei, and it's best he tells him now, instead of down the road after All Might has been mauled by Aizawa sensei for giving Izuku a quirk as powerful as one for all, as hazardously as he had. So, yeah, he should probably give Toshinori a bit of a heads up. Aizawa-sensei was already upset enough that Izuku hadn't told him at the beginning of the year, that he'd just recently gotten his quirk. He'd hate to think about what Sensei would do to the number one hero, who he already has a dislike of, when he finds out All Might had explicitly told Izuku not to tell anyone. There's... something I have to tell you. Oh? Toshinori prompts with a tilt of his head. You can tell me anything. Sensei, um, he kind of knows about my quirk. All Might freezes abruptly, gaze searching Izuku for any sign he was joking. The man draws in a steady breath before his gaze locks back on the boy. Knows what? Not about one for all, Izuku hurries to say, heart thrumming with panic. I promise, just, just that I got it recently. I, um, I told him that I got it on the day of the entrance exam, but he thinks I'm just a late bloomer. I just... I couldn't. It's not fair to do it alone. All Might, I know that you you did, but I can't, and I'm falling behind in class, and this is my dream. I, I, 
I want to be a hero, but I can't do it alone. I didn't do it alone, All Might frowns, gaze surveying over the teen softly. I had a mentor, too. You did? A breath rushes out of Izuku's lungs. Yes, I did. The man gives a light laugh, rubbing the back of his neck. I... I apologize, young Midoriya. I'm not... I'm not a good mentor. Not like my mentor was. I know it's not fair. I do. I know I haven't been great at this. You've been making more progress alone than you have been with me. You've had to shoulder a lot of this alone. And that isn't fair either. I've been... completely unfair. I suppose I got ahead of myself. We're different people, and I... I had a really good teacher when it came to learning one for all. You're not angry? Izuku frowns. He shifts ansily on the bed, wincing as his broken fingers tense anxiously. All Might hadn't been angry when Izuku had told Kachan, but he hadn't been pleased either. He'd seen the unease in the man's eyes, but there was none of that now. At myself? Yes. Foshinori sighs, hunching forwards. At you? No. To tell you the truth, I'm a little relieved, Aizawa knows. He's a good teacher, and I know he'll aid you, and your process of mastering one for all, far better than I. I regret not being there when you needed me, and I regret not being able to give you the help you deserve. I've been a subpar mentor for you, but I hope you'll still come to me with any questions about one for all that you might have. Of course! Izuku nods vigorously. I definitely will, All Might. I know you've been trying. I do. I just... I need help sometimes, and you're not always available. I'm sorry I told Sensei without asking. No need for that, my boy, Toshinori smiles. You didn't do anything wrong. There's nothing wrong with getting help with it. You just can't... I have to remind you that you can't tell him any of the secrets of One for All. I trust Aizawa, but it's dangerous for too many people to know. I do hate to put that burden on you, but it sadly comes with the quirk. I understand, Izuku swallows, playing his own fingers. There is a lot he doesn't know about his new quirk, but he does trust All Might to tell him what he needs to know. The pro smiles at him almost sadly. Izuku returns a lighter one, and they settle into a quiet conversation about how Izuku's classes have been going, and stories about All Might's hero work. Izuku leaves Recovery Girl's office feeling lighter than he had in months. Sensei knew. All Might knew that Sensei knew and wasn't mad. And Izuku would finally be getting help with his quirk. Well, when Sensei was better. We need to talk. Izuku jerks up from where he slouched over his journal at his bedroom desk, cocking his head at the sight of the ghost in his bedroom. He hadn't seen him since sending him away to be with Aizawa Sensei, but his sudden presence and the stern words had a chill of fear crawling up his spine. It's pretty late. Izuku had been thinking about heading to bed after working on the last few details as he was adding to his book. He was exhausted from his visit with Recovery Girl, and the after-school nap he'd taken in the infirmary really hadn't helped recharge his stamina. A good night's rest is what the old woman had cooed before sending him while on his way with his fingers wrapped in his bruised forearm, an interesting flourish of a healing yellowish brown. We, we, we do? Izuku swallows heavily, shutting his journal as he turns in the chair to give Obro his full attention. Is, is Sensei all right? He's not... Dead, Izuku couldn't force out, mouth drying at just the thought. Is he? What? Obro looks confused for a second before his eyes widen and he shakes his head furiously. No, I mean, yes, he's fine. Well, not fine, but he's... he's getting there? He's... he's still unconscious, and they're not sure when he'll wake up. He's been seen by a lot of doctors with healing quirks, and RG stopped in a bit ago, too. Show's okay. I don't... don't worry. He'll... he'll survive. Thank God. Izuku blows out a breath he hadn't known he was holding in. You can't just scare me like that. I thought you were popping in here to tell me he died. Guilt clouds the ghost's face as he shrugs sheepishly. Sorry, Izu. He's... he's healing, okay? Izuku takes another couple seconds to swallow down the panic that had bubbled up, as well as try to get his breathing under control before finally looking back up at the ghost. He regards Obero carefully, unsure. If it's not about Sensei, then... then what is it? That seemed to be all Obero needed for the sheepish guilt to freeze back into the sternness from what Obero had first appeared. What the hell was that today? What? Izuku blinks at the ghost, Obero's back in his school uniform. He's got his arms crossed over his face and a look of glaring uncertainty on it. What the hell was what? The villain attack? Why would I know anything about that? Are you kidding me? Obero squawks, arms flapping in a way that matches the noise that he'd made, like a surprised bird. No, not the villain attack. That old thing with the clouds. 
that thing where my clouds were in the real world, that thing where I touched you, like, I, like physically touched you. Do you know how long it's been? You were there for that. I know you were. I just, we, we, what the hell was it? That's all. Zuku's throat feels tight. That, that all really happened? Yes, Obro snaps, eyes wide with disbelief. I literally floated your classmates away on a cloud. I've never made so many clouds all at once. Izuku, I mean, there was the one we were on, the ones your friends were on, the one hiding show, and the one that was keeping the villains trapped. I've never... It's... It's impossible, Izuku. I'm dead. You're alive. My quirk shouldn't... I shouldn't be able to. And... And... I've tried for years to touch people, and I did. I touched you. I felt you. Obro was almost in hysterics now, and Izuku can't help but feel the same. There's a sickening panic swirling in his stomach. He really had thought that he'd imagined it, or that he's at some point taken a hit to the head. It was impossible. You used your clouds to rescue Suyu and Mineta. That's the part you're focused on? Obro snorts, shooting a soft glare at the green-haired boy. I did, he furrows his eyebrows. But I don't know how I did. Izuku's not sure what the ghost wants him to say. Okay, so... How did you, why did, how did it happen? I don't know. Do you even hear what I'm saying? I just told you I have no idea what the hell happened. The ghost snarls, but there's no real heat in it. In fact, Obro looks scared, uncertain in the way he marches to Azuka's bed and drops like dead weight onto the mattress. What did you do? Me? Azuka swirls in his desk chair to meet the ghost's gaze head on. What did I do? It was your quirk. I can't make clouds. I don't even have a quirk over oh. What do you mean, what did I do? What did you do? Ghosts can't use their quirk. I hardly even exist outside of you, Obro snapped. Don't you think that if I could have, I would have already? I don't have a physical form. I'm just, I don't even know. I'm a soul or a spirit or whatever the hell ghosts actually are. You know, the first thing I tried to do when I realized I didn't make it out alive was try to use my quirk. And guess what? Didn't work. Okay, Izuku forces out, straightening his back before he stands. He doesn't even notice he's pacing anxiously. Okay, I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry, I just... What the hell is happening? I don't even... One second I was about to die, and the next you're there, and you're touching me, and there's clouds everywhere, and I thought I imagined that, and... And... Hey, hey, wait a sec. Obro jumps up, anger from before melting into genuine concern. Izuku's hazy mind takes a second too long to realize he hadn't been breathing, and it's only when the ghost is at his side and has a has brushed a hand through his wrist that he draws in a sharp, stuttered breath. Take a breath, okay? Calm down, Izu. It's okay. The lightheadedness alerts him that he'd slipped into a panic attack, but the cool chill of Oboro's presence cools him down relatively fast. It's obvious to the both of them that he hadn't had a second to really think about the USJ, let alone decompress from it. He sucks in a couple deep breaths under Obero's careful instructions. He wishes that he could hug Obero. He wishes that he could feel him again, just so he didn't have to feel so alone. They stand side by side for a moment. The ghost doesn't make a move or try to touch him again. And out of the corner of his eye, Izuku can see him gnawing on the bottom of his lip. Obero wants to reach out and touch him, but he hadn't gotten the same results as he had at the USJ when he tried. Izuku's so confused. This is confusing. Everything's a mess, and he doesn't know what to do with it. Are you all right now? Obro's voice is so quiet, Izuku almost doesn't hear him. He turns his head to see the ghost watching him, frowning at him. His hand is outstretched, frozen in place like he'd been reaching to set a comforting hand on him again, only to stop abruptly when he remembered he couldn't. Izuku sucks in another breath before giving a shallow nod. Yeah. I'm sorry. Obro ducks his head guiltily, slinking away from Izuku to collapse on the bed again. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, to cause an attack. I'm just so confused. For years, I've been alone. I haven't been able to touch anyone and barely able to touch material objects to touch anything. My quirk was as good as gone. And then suddenly, with you, I can. And it's there, and I panicked because how how is it possible? It's not. But it happened anyways. Let's... Think about this rationally, Izuku tells him, shuffling towards his bed to sit against the headboard. Obero is stretched out along the foot of his bed. Izuku pulls up his knees to his chest and lets his arms wrap snugly around them. Obero's head lulls in his direction, and Izuku frowns at the fond smile on his face. You sounded so much like show right there, that Mr. Always Rational attitude. I did not, 
Izuku pouts, turning his head to the side in an attempt to hide his expression. And it's true. There's no point in us talking over each other. We won't figure anything out that way. Let's just lay it out on the table. Maybe then we can figure something out about this. Okay, Elboro agrees. Tell me about your quirk. Azuku cocks his head, gaze now back on the ghost. Obero is staring up at the ceiling, arms crossed over his chest and legs hanging off the edge of the bed. The ghost's head turns back towards Azuku, and then he sits up, pulling his legs up to sit crisscross on the bed. He's quiet for another second, thoughtful, like he's trying to figure out how to explain it. It's been a while since he'd even thought about his quirk, especially if he hadn't been able to use it. It's called Cloud, but I already told you that. I can create them and manipulate them at will. They can be dense enough to shield people from danger and to withstand the weight of people and things on them, like us and your classmates, but they can also be used as distractions, like with the villains. I can alter the type of cloud and the density to suit whatever I need it for, but... Obero bites his bottom lip thoughtfully. But I can't usually make more than one or two, and it gets harder to control the more that there are. I was, well, I was learning how to create a second cloud after the first when I... You know. Izuku gives a slow, knowing nod. One or two, Izuku frowns, but... I know, Obero groans. I know there were more than two at the USJ. That's... I've never been able to do that. I told you I panicked. You were, like, so close to having your face smashed in, and that Dylan with the DK quirk was reaching for those two students in show. He was... I panicked, okay? I told you, I wasn't sure I'd be able to manipulate and guide the clouds like I wanted because I'd only been able to have 100% control of a single cloud. Azuku's head bows in another nod. That makes sense, but still, there had been five clouds total, all doing different jobs or different densities, and he'd had to physically control three of them while keeping the other two completely steady, the one that he and Obero had been on that was going down, and the ones Mineta and Suyu had been on going sideways and down, all without disturbing Aizawa Sensei's shield cloud, and the cloud keeping the villains confused and contained like a heavy fog. So what's different then? Izuku mumbles into his knee. What's there now that wasn't before? Obero shoots him a dumbfounded look. You, Izuku. You're what's changed. Me? Izuku blinks owlishly as the thought tries to make sense before he shakes his head, recoiling into himself more in disapproval. The boy squishes his mouth and nose into the gap between his knees before continuing voice muffled. There's nothing special about me, Obero. I don't know what's going on, but I doubt I have anything to do with it. You see ghosts, Izuku. The other teen stressed the word. You see ghosts. You can see, hear, and talk to us. I... I touched you, Izuku. I've never... I haven't in so long, but I was desperate to get to you because... Because I didn't know what was going to happen, and I was just reaching to reassure you that I was there, and I... I wasn't really thinking. And then my hand settled on your shoulder, and didn't phase through like it always does. And I guess my quirk activated? You did touch me, Izuku agrees, head cocking to the side. I remember that. You touched my shoulder and then my wrist. You pulled me back, right? Those bits are a little hazy for Izuku. He remembers the feeling of the contact, but he doesn't even register it until Obero had tugged him away after they were way up on part of the cloud. Yeah, I... Obero bows his head. I don't know. I just knew I had to get you away from that thing. You saved me, Izuku hums distantly. You saved us all. Thank you for for saving my friends, and my sensei, and and me. Izuku's not sure, but the ghost's face lights up in a faint blush. He ducks his head to hide his cheeks, clearing his throat. No biggie. I'd have done it for anyone. I'm just... I'm glad you're all okay. It's almost a funny thought that even in the afterlife, some heroes try to keep helping. Obero was a ghost, and he'd been the first to follow Aizawa-sensei into the fight, even though, technically, he wasn't much help without a physical form or a quirk. He'd run himself into the ground, using all of his energy to distract the villains, only to keep fighting more intensely, if that were even possible, when Izuku and his classmates showed up. He had one goal, and that was keeping them all safe. It was to be a hero. You're a hero, Izuku tells him softly, finally lifting his face from his knees to smile at his friend. Thank you. What kind of a hero student would I be if I didn't go plus ultra? The ghost teases, but there is a defeated sadness hidden away in the smile that twitches at the edges. He's clearly trying to hide it so Izuku doesn't mention it at all. The snort of laughter at the plus ultra is completely involuntary from the green-haired child. 
You know, if the uniform wasn't a complete giveaway that you were a UA student, that definitely would have been. What can I say? Obero grins. That sour curl of defeat has been wiped away from his expression. UA is practically in my blood at this point. Izuku lets out a good-natured laugh, letting his chin settle on his knees as he smiles. The mirth drains away, and the serious face of thoughtfulness is back as he mutters to himself. Obero thinks briefly about tuning in and trying to decipher it, but... Izuku speaking in what sounds like tongues that only he seems to be able to process. How are you able to touch me? Izuku asks softly. But when Obero glances and he settles back on the younger boy, re- ready to snap an annoyance once again that he didn't know, he notices the green haired boy's gaze locked on the bedroom door across from him. Obero's jaw snaps shut, a rhetorical question. It's not even half a second later that Izuku's turning toward him, eyes dark with determination. Touch me. What? Obro swears his brain short circuits. Azuka's hand reaches out between them, palm upwards like he's asking for a down low high five. The hand is unwavering between them as Obro hesitates. He'd drawn his hands up to his chest at the demand from Azuku, eyes flicking between Azuku's face and the hand outstretched to him. I'll go through, Obro whispers hoarsely. He's not sure why he's afraid now. Phasing through Azuku hadn't bothered him before, but it does now. Now there'd been a time where he hadn't phased through him. You didn't at the USJ, Zuka reminds him with a frown. I did when I tried to grab your wrist earlier, the ghost refutes with a heavier frown. He'd been hoping that maybe... Well, he didn't actually know what he'd been really hoping for. Maybe it was for whatever had happened in the USJ to have been permanent. That he'd be able to touch Zuku now, but that hopeful thought had been torn away when he'd almost stumbled to the ground after his hand fell right through Zuku's panic-shaken form. Izuku's lips move with silent mumbles for a moment before he's looking back up, determination still bright in his green gaze. Try again. Obero doesn't move, he feels frozen in place. His hands are interlocked together and pressed to his chest, like Izuku's own hand will somehow burn through him if he touches him. Ironically, the opposite will happen, he knows. It'll be cold, and Izuku will get the chill, not him. Still, he can't deny when Izuku's face softens and a gentle, almost inaudible, please, slips from the boy's mouth. He lets the tense hands relax, untangling his fingers before inching closer. His hand hovers above Izuku's, a frown on his lips. He almost smiles despite himself as Izuku wiggles his fingers lightly, as if trying to prompt Obero towards him. The ghost blows out a breath before slowly dropping his hand. It goes through. Izuku doesn't so much as shiver as the chill Obero knows is crawling up his arm. Hand still outstretched and unwavering. It's Obero who draws and withdraws like the chill had actually shot up his arm instead of the uncomfortable tingle that was actually there. I told you. Again. Izuku's biting his lip, eyes narrowed at the outstretched hand. Think about it, Obero. Want it. We've touched before, and we can again. Think about it. Think about the USJ. What was different there? Why did it happen then? The USJ? He hadn't wanted it at the USJ. He desperately needed it. Shota was one of his best friends. Was tipping between unconsciousness, walking the fine, fine line between surviving and death. The students were all in danger, that frog girl and the purple one. The villain was too close to them for comfort and would have used his quirk on the girl, and Shota hadn't have activated his quirk. And Izuku. God, Izuku. He'd been running towards him before he'd even realized he was. He needed to get to the boy who was caught in that monster's grasp. He couldn't leave him alone, desperately needed to be by his side, even if it was just to be with him as he'd The ghost didn't even want to finish that thought. They'd only known each other for a couple of weeks, but it felt like they were brothers. Izuka was the only thing he had left, the only thing that he'd had after so many years of isolation. The green-haired boy gasped, the sound of it yanked Obero away from his own thoughts. His attention shot up to Izuku briefly before it was flying around the room, searching wildly for whatever caused the sound to bubble up from the boy's mouth. When he didn't notice anything out of place, no sign of a threat, the ghost let his gaze settle completely on Izuku. Izuku's gaze was downcast, eyes wide and locked on something. What? Obro followed the teen's attention, down where he expected to see a bug or something on the mattress, something out of place that would warrant this intense look and the gasp of shock. Izuku's hand was on his wrist. Izuku was holding his wrist. He couldn't feel it, but he could see it. Nimble, scarred fingers tightening around something that wasn't even really there. Obero glares down at their hands, at Izuku's hand on him, touching him. 
He knows his jaw drops, eyes wide with the matching shock, and surprise and genuine excitement to Izuku's. They stare down for a while, both afraid to move. I'm touching you, Obro whispers out brokenly. He could cry. He was touching Izuku. He couldn't feel it, but it was happening. It was happening before his eyes. They were touching. A living, breathing person was touching him, a ghost. Technically, I'm touching you, Izuku mutters in awe. This is... it's... insane, Obero breathes out. I can't... I don't feel it. I did earlier at the USJ, but now... Almost as if provoked by Obero's words, Izuku's hand falls through his own wrist. The boy's smaller body falling along with it, and he barely catches himself on the mattress before toppling unsteadily off the bed. Obero wants to cry now. I'm sorry, the ghost forces out, chest feeling heavy with sadness and and something familiar that Obero can't place. No, it's okay, you're tired, Izuku shakes his head, sending him a light smile. He's still in the position he'd landed in, and if Obero had been in a solid form, he'd landed in... Uh, he'd have had a lap full of Izuku. He doesn't feel Izuku phasing through him, nor does Izuku seem to feel the chill from literally being in the ghost's lap. I'm tired, Obro repeated, cocking his head like the concept was foreign, and it was. He was a ghost. The last time he'd slept was 13 years ago. Ghost didn't sleep. He didn't have a body to recharge. Nothing about him needed rest, and when he tried, he'd just end up sitting or laying there with his eyes closed like an idiot. A long 13-year battle with constant insomnia. Izuku gave an affirming hum. At the USJ, you used all your energy when you were helping Aizawa Sensei with the villains. I noticed it. It stopped being effective past a certain point, like you tried to stop the decayed quirk villain from touching Sensei. He didn't even notice you. I doubt he even felt it, because I don't feel anything right now. Oboro faintly remembers that. He'd been too desperate to really focus on the fact that it wasn't effective. He just needed to be helping however he could, and that meant throwing himself through anything that he got too close to. But we just touched, Obro muttered dumbly. And you were exhausted at the USJ when, when you used your quirk, the boy adds, and he bites his lip thoughtfully, worrying it between his teeth so hard that Obro fears that he's going to split it open. I'm not sure why it worked. Desperation, maybe? I was desperate to, um, well, to not die. And you were desperate to, to get to me and to save everyone. It happened without either of us trying. We didn't even know it could happen. The younger teen shifted in his spot as he stared unseeingly past Obero, shoulders hunched as he mouthed words to himself. He didn't get carried away this time, and soon he was rejoining the conversation. The USJ happened hours ago. Maybe you... I don't know. I don't want to use the word recharged, because you're not a cell phone, but maybe you did. Like, not enough to do it again, but enough to start up, you know? You're comparing me to a cell phone? Obero muses flatly. I'm bad at metaphors, Izuku whines, but it makes sense, though. I mean, have you ever noticed how a smartphone will grasp at that one last percent of its battery life? That's what you did at the USJ. You used the remainder of your power, your, um, power-saving mode, to activate your quirk, and then you've been, for a lack of better words, and just to go with the metaphor, charging since then. It must, it must take a lot of time to recuperate for you to get your energy back. You are really are comparing me to a smartphone. Obero snorts. Shush! Izuku shoots him a soft glare, continuing on as if Obero hadn't said anything at all. We just used the rest of your energy, what little you regained from then up until now. That's why we touched for a couple seconds but couldn't keep it going, like at the USJ when you let go of me everything disappeared. It was you, ghost energy, your quirk. When you physically weren't there anymore, neither was your quirk's effects. How do you know all this? Obro demands hesitantly, raising an eyebrow and blinking uncertainly at Izuku as he now starts to regain his composure and pull himself back up to a sitting position. I don't, Izuku snorts a laugh. I'm theorizing and analyzing. There's no way to know any of this. I'm, this is, I'm pretty sure this is a pretty unique situation. Neither say anything for a second before Izuku shakes his head and looks up at the ceiling in thought. Now the only question is, How'd you manage to manifest like that? Are you kidding me? The living teen jerks his gaze back down to Obero, where he sees the ghost giving him a look that's scarily similar to Aizawa Sensei's tired glare. It makes Izuku want to shrink in on himself, but he also knows this is Obero, and not his kind of scary sensei. 
You did it, Izuku. It was you. It couldn't have been, Izuku protests. I don't... How could I do that, Obero? Has it ever occurred to you that maybe, just maybe, this whole seeing ghost thing could be a quirk? I mean, look at what happened today. I used my quirk through you. It didn't happen until I touched you, and don't even get me started on the fact that I touched you twice. No, Izuku frowns. It hasn't. It's impossible. I'm quirkless. Plus, I was born being able to see ghosts. It didn't start randomly when I was four or five. And, not to mention the fact that I have an extra toe joint and I'm medically diagnosed quirkless. You do realize mutation quirks exist, right? Izuku's thoughts stutter to a complete stop. A mutation quirk? Him? I could explain the fact that he'd been seeing them as long as he could remember. Maybe it didn't suddenly manifest when he was a child because... Because maybe it was already there. Could that really... I have an extra toe joint, Izuku's protest comes out weak at this point. It was diagnosed. I saw the x-rays myself. So some medical quack made a mistake, Obro tells him softly but seriously. Misdiagnoses happen, Izu. He could have read them wrong, or there could have been something faulty in the x-rays, or maybe your quirk, if it is a mutated one, could have messed with your toes. So little is known about mutation quirks. It wouldn't surprise me if you got misdiagnosed because of it. I don't know. Point is, normal people don't see ghosts. Normal people? Izuku frowns. Rude coming from the literal ghost. The literal ghost who only you can see, Obero teases, not even trying to look sheepish. It's the truth. You've had your quirk this whole time, and the USJ attack must have been an awakening of sorts. You've had a quirk. It's seeing those who are dead. But now we've seen that you can actually interact and use them. Use their quirks. I don't want to use you, Izuku pouts. That makes me feel weird, using someone. I don't want to use someone. Wrong choice of words. Obro tilts his head to shoot Izuku a light smile. Borrow, then. You can borrow quirks. And, well, technically I used you, I think. I mean, nothing happened until I touched you. But did I prompt it? Like, did it happen because you touched me or because I, I don't know, because I wanted it to happen? Maybe the quirk was active without me knowing, and it's gone both ways. You touched me at the USJ, but I touched you here. Obero gapes like a fish. Um, I don't, I don't know. Izuku lets out a groan. I have so many questions, and there's so many tests we gotta run. Well, after you've rested for a while, and, whoa, I gotta, like, record all this. I have a quirk. You used my quirk to use yours. Or maybe I used my quirk to use yours by using you as well. Stop. You're making my brain hurt, Obero whined, tangling his fingers in his own gravity-defying locks and massaging at his head. Izuku let out an honest laugh at the reaction, which prompts a glare from Obero. Thanks, Zuku. I appreciate the sympathy. You don't even really have a head, Zuku teases, head cocking as he shoots what he knows is a shit-eating grin at his friend. You've literally got no mass, Obero. I have a head, Obero squawks, tapping the top of his head smugly as if to prove his point. See? Solid. That doesn't count. You don't have a hand either. Zuku's full-on cackling now. A hand that doesn't exist will be able to touch a head that doesn't exist. They're in the same dimension, or something like that. I don't know ghosts very well. You're mean, Obero pouts, but is silently pleased to see Izuku laughing. The ghost pouts for just a second before his expression turns smug. Don't forget you can touch me too, Uzu. The boy sputters, which prompts a laugh from the ghost. Forgot about that part, huh? Guess I must exist. Izuku laughs again, but it's softer and fond. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you exist somewhere, just... Not usually here. Unless you're around, he shrugs, hands falling in his lap as he tilts his head to the side and shoots Izuku his squinty grin. Unless I'm around, the boy agrees with a fond half-smile. For whatever reason. Izuku stared down at his hero analysis for the future notebook, volume 13, where he'd been steadily making his way through his classmates' interesting quirks. The page was turned to one of his first few analyses entries. Shirakuma Obero, Quirk Cloud, Hero Name, Unknown, Abilities, Able to Generate and Manipulate Clouds, Can Control the Density of Clouds and the Cloud Type, Clouds Can Be Used as Shields, Transportation, and as a Distraction slash Trap, Depending on the Density, Clouds Can Withstand Human Weight, Amongst Others, Things Such as Debris, Unsure of the Weight Limit, Cloud Quantity is Undetermined, Additional Information to be Added. Off to the side of the page was a detailed drawing of Obero in the costume from the USJ. 
He'd add as much detail as he could remember, racking his brain for those little easily missed things. It looks good, he thinks. He's sure he's missed something, because he'd only really looked at the hero costume for a couple of seconds between the panic of everything, but it looks decent. Uzuku lulls back in his chair, gaze settling on Obro, who was hunched over his laptop on the bed, completely engrossed in a YouTube rabbit hole, where he'd somehow ended up on baking videos. Uzuku was a bit afraid of what his homepage was going to look af like after this, especially since Obro will watch anything that comes up, instead of skimming the suggested videos on the side. His gaze lingers on Obero, eyes taking in the details of his face. He turns back to his hero costume sketch, erasing the hair and redrawing it so it was more cloud-like. He added a couple more details before nodding to himself. The green-haired teen paused for a second before turning to the next available page. Midori Izuku. Quirk. Ghost? To be determined. Hero name. Deku. Abilities? To be determined. Hey, no! Obero grumbled behind him. The button's back! Izu, come click it! It was... No! Thirty seconds! There's two ads! It'll go away after the ads are finished, Izuku snorts, like he hadn't already told Obero that multiple times. Whenever an ad comes up, at least, he feels his chest vibrate as he laughs fondly at the ghost. Despite the laugh and promise that it'll go away on its own, the teen pushes away from his desk with a light smile. But the cupcakes! Izuku is really not expecting Aizawa sensei to stroll swiftly into his classroom on Thursday morning. It had only been two days since the USJ attack, and as far as Izuku had heard from Oboro, Aizawa sensei had only just woken up in the hospital yesterday evening. The ghost had been completely ecstatic when he'd appeared behind Izuku in the kitchen. Over the past two days since the USJ attack, Oboro had been hanging around more. He'd peri periodically disappear to the hospital for a couple of hours before returning. He's awake! He grinned, smiling wider than he usually did. Izuku couldn't help but wonder if it hurt to smile that big. He's finally up! Were you there when he woke up? Izuku turned to face the ghost, smiling widely, but it wasn't even close to Obro's. Nope. The ghost deflated slightly before perking up again. But that's okay, because he wasn't alone. All that matters is he's awake, and he's doing well. Still looks like shit, but he's alive. I'm glad he's all right. Izuku smiled softly. Pleased to see Obero so excited. He was glad his teacher was okay. Izuku still didn't completely trust him, and he was still a bit afraid of him, but he'd hated the fact that Sensei had been so injured so seriously. The thought of it had made his stomach queasy, so he was relieved to hear he'd woken up. Obero had left again right after sharing the good news, but Izuku was just glad that his friend had kept good on his word of being his messenger. After the USJ attack, the school had given all the students a day off to recuperate. And Izuku's class had been given an additional day to decompress from the incident so early in their schooling. Thursday morning brought Izuku, excited to return. It had been too quiet at the apartment over the two-day break. He hadn't seen his mother, and Obero had been bouncing between the hospital and the apartment. It comes as a shock when the door slides open, and Izuku's attention lifts from his notebook only to see his sensei stumbling in. His steps are slow, and his arms and face are wrapped almost completely in bandages. S sensei Izuku jerks up, but hovers beside his desk, uncertainly. He wants to go help him, but he has a feeling that Sensei would snap at him if he tried. Uh, are you all right? I'm fine. The bandages wrinkle as he speaks. He sounds relatively the same, maybe just a little more tired than usual. Honestly, if you weren't looking at him, couldn't see the bandages, he'd sound perfectly fine. Behind Sensei, uh, Izuku spots Obero, who looks incredibly annoyed. He's glaring daggers at Sensei's back, arms crossed over his chest as he steps after the man. Should you? Izuku bites his lip, knowing he shouldn't question his Sensei. The question of, should you be back so soon, dies on his lips. No, Obero snaps after regarding Izuku for a slow second, like he just realized he was there too at the half question. No, he should not be here. Stupid idiot never listens, thinks he's goddamn invincible or something. You had your brains bashed in two days ago. You woke up yesterday. Take a me day, Shota. Izuku blinks at the raging ghost in his direction before he looks towards his teacher again. He can almost see Sensei's eyes peeking out from behind the bandages, and it feels like he's watching Izuku, studying him behind the cover of his bandages. He's not really sure if he actually is, or if Izuku's just being irrational. Still, if Sensei can see him, he's probably wondering why Izuku's staring at the side of his desk, 
instead of looking at him. Should I what, problem child? Nothing, Izuku squeaks, ducking his head in a quick bow that he lingers in. I, um, it's really nothing, sensei, just, I'm really glad you're okay. I was, I was wondering if you were, but no one said anything, and then, well, we all had the last two days off because it was a bit stressful so soon in the year, but you, um, you, you didn't look too good, and we were worried, and, problem child. Sensei's low but calm voice promptly cuts off his ramblings. He draws in a nervous breath, finally lifting his head from the bow and letting his attention shift to his teacher. Y yes Sensei? Slow down. It's a quiet demand. Soft, even. Sensei leans back against the edge of his desk, body angled towards Izuku. He has to be able to see, right? Breathe a second. I'm okay. I'm sorry no one told the students that Thirteen and I were all right. I imagine it was suspenseful. Izuku swallows, ducking his head in a hesitant nod. I was worried, Sensei. I'm okay, the man repeats offhandedly, but there's underlying softness. How are you doing, Midoriya? I'm okay, the teen promises. I, um, I kind of hurt myself a little, but it's all better now. Recovery Girl took care of it. He knows better than to lie to Aizawa Sensei, for all he knows. Since he had already talked to Recovery Girl and knows exactly what Izuku had visited her regarding her, his injuries. There's some bruising still, but it's, it's healing well. Will the bruising deter our training session tomorrow morning? Uh, our sensei, you're hurt. We, we shouldn't. That's, I can still use my quirk, the man tuts. If you think we're going to be starting with combat, you're sorely mistaken, problem child. Your quirk is new, not just to me, but to you as well. We both need to get a feel of it, and I can do that even with these bandages. So are you all right to train tomorrow or not? Of course. Izuku gives a firm nod, ignoring the way Oboro seethes at Aizawa's side. He's muttering to himself, but Izuku's far too, understand, far too away to understand what he's actually saying. Good, Sensei hums. Now, let's go. C go? Izuku frowns, quirking his head to the side as he grabs his journal and backpack to follow his teacher, who turns swiftly and marched towards the door like he wasn't more bandaged than skin. It's Thursday. You're going to meet Hound Dog, and you're going to have your first session before classes start. It's non-negotiable, considering the USJ attack and everything I know you saw. But, but... Izuku shoots over a pleading look. The blue-haired teen shrugs with a frown, gesturing Izuku to follow Aizawa Sensei down the hall as he turns to make his way to Mike Sensei's class. He's still radiating annoyance at the teacher as he turns to leave, but Izuku hopes that he'll calm down a bit after some time apart from Sensei. Hopefully. Non-negotiable, Sensei interrupts calmly as he leads a trailing Izuku along. Relax, Midoriya, it's not just you. The entire class will be having a check-in throughout the next few days. You just have the luxury of going first, since Hound Dog's already cleared this morning's schedule on the days that you asked for. Izuku's silent as he follows. He's defeated. He doesn't really want to talk about it yet, but he will if Sensei wants him to. And maybe it won't be awful to talk with someone he doesn't have to worry about judging him. Counselors don't judge, do they? It's for your best interest, kid, Sensei mutters softly as they walk. No shame in needing a bit of help sorting yourself out. We all do sometimes, especially after something traumatic. You students have the option of guided help, and Hound Dog is one of the best counselors around. I urge you, like I will to your peers as well, to take advantage of it. Do you see a counselor, Sensei? Izuku asks meekly, clutching his notebook to his chest. He's caught up in Sensei's significantly slowed steps, falling into step beside him. The man regards him cautiously for a second before he looks forwards again. I do, kid. Well, if Sensei does, then Izuku will try as well. This concludes Chapter 7 of UA Survival Guide. We'll be back with Chapter 8 for you guys as well here as soon as possible. As always, thank you so much for listening.